Hey, what's up? I'm Big Hush. I'm gonna show you how to turn this mask into a combination of Jason Voorhees and Ghostface. We start with a blank mask. I like to sand it with 120 grit sandpaper, but that's up to you. The ghost face mask has a very long mouth and there's not a lot of room on this mask to replicate that. So I made the mouth as long as I could, but we kind of had to go up into the nose a little bit with it. I changed my mind and I moved my lines to the outside of the mask. Instead of trying to shape and form the mask on the inside around the eyes and, and make the long skinny jawline and all that stuff, I decided to move my lines to the outside of the mask just to make it easier. See, I'm using Dover white, which is kind of an off-white. Supposedly, this is the white that they used on the original Jason Voorhees hockey mask. Uh, whether or not that's true, I don't know for sure, but I do like the tone of this white. Here are some chevrons I designed myself for this ghost face mask. If you want a printable PDF template, the link is below in the info. plain printer paper. I use water to spray it down to make it stick to the mask. And then I use a paper towel to dry out the area where I'm going to be painting. I just want to get the chevron on here with some nice edges and then I'll go back in and darken it up by painting in more red. Right, now I'm using some burnt umber brown. It's just a dark brown and I'm gonna dry brush some dirt onto this mask. I like to do different layers of dirt in different colors. So first I'm gonna start with dark brown and then I'm gonna move on to black. Scary night, isn't it? Where the murders and all, it's like right out of a horror movie or something. Thing you're doing with your voice recently. Sexy. <laughs> What's your favorite scary on these vent holes and just have some downward brush strokes coming out of it. Looks really good. This is one of my favorite things to do. You know it. I love adding distress with a knife blade. All I'm doing is scraping the knife blade flat against the paint real gently and adding some nice distressing. I like to call this damage after dirt because the dirt it doesn't just go on the mask and then that's the end of everything the mask is going to go through. It really makes the mask look old and worn and used and like it's been through more than just getting dirty or just getting damaged. I'm using this damp rag to reveal more white area where I might have gone too heavy with the dirt. You can also add texture I like to jab and twist at the paint. It just adds another texture effect that looks really cool in my opinion. Last thing I'm doing is giving the edges just a slight highlight. If you just scrape around the very corner of the edges with a knife. Here's some black nylons I got from your mama's house. This part's really tricky because the curve of the mask makes it very difficult to get your hands in there the way you want to, but you have to apply the hot glue first, then get the nylons down as quickly as you can, and the nylons have to be stretched out so that there's no wrinkles or folds, so it's a, it's a tricky little process. a 
razor blade to cut these nylons. It'll cut through real easy. It'll give you no trouble. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you appreciate the effort that went into making this mask and editing this video, please stab that like button for me. If you wanna go a step further, please hit that share button and pass this video out to your friends and family who you think might enjoy it. Otherwise, check out this playlist of all my other mask videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.